Kyle and I are interested in how habits are made in the brain and whether we can manipulate them. And in particular, we also all know it's really hard to break a habit. Can we actually break a habit or even make a habit not form? So we had previously done an experiment where we were able to use a maze task to get rats running habitually. And we had some measures of that. And we were able to um, go in with haloridopsin, which is an optogenetic tool allowing us to inhibit cells and take a piece of the cortex called the infralimbic cortex that we know from some really terrific uh, work in the past is important for habits. But now we were able to go in and, and turn it off as the animal was performing this task. And what we were able to show is that we could train an animal up so he was habitual and then just do this little perturbation in the cortex and cause him to no longer be habitual as though uh, he never formed a habit in the first place. So then the question comes, what's going on in the brain when this develops and why, why could we do that? And could we possibly prevent the habit from forming? And so we recorded the activity of this infra infralimbic area, but we also at the same time recorded the activity of the dorsolateral striatum. A lot of great prior work has shown that both of these sites are necessary for habit performance. If you lesion them, animals are no longer habitual. Uh, but there's not a whole lot known about what brain activity in these areas is doing. What changes as behavior shifts into and out of habitual states? We found that certain patterns form when a habit is formed behaviorally. And we were able to show that you have these two sites in the brain either working through indirect links to one another or in parallel. One in the striatum encoding the action sequences and we found the activity there being highly sensitive to whether or not the animals were deliberating. It was much stronger if they were not. Whereas in the cortex, the activity came and went with the habit and so might be in one sense providing ultimate permission over the habit being expressed. And then based on really the actual fine details of the patterns of neural activity that we found, we went in and did some very targeted perturbations. So what we did was to uh, inject animals with a construct uh, encoding for a haloredopsin transgene, and then we can go in with this yellow-orange light and shine it bilaterally in the infralimic cortex uh, to perturb the activity of those cells. And we do that just uh, from the time the animal starts running to the time it reaches the goal. And we're going to do this sort of day after day during this overtraining period as the animal runs this task, then do the devaluation and the probe test and ask how much are the animals going to run to this devalued goal. And the answer was not a whole lot. They acted as though they were never overtrained. And that suggested to us that this activity of the infralimbic cortex happening uh, during this critical overtraining period during each run was necessary for crystallizing behavior into a habit. What was so strange to us and so fascinating is that this control is absolutely a moment-to-moment -moment control. So even if you have a very, very well ingrained behavior, you do it over and over as though it were automatic, it isn't really automatic because there's a piece of cortex kind of monitoring the situation all the time as though to give permission or not for the habit to occur. And so I think one implication of this work is that we think of habits as being something that we're just stuck with. Uh, maybe we are, but there's this level of control that we can maybe tap into down the road um, to help replace habits or form new ones or uh, potentially even suppress uh, harmful ones that we're going through.